Hey you awesome geeks, I'm Brian and this is The Smuggler's Room. So I've been designing a kit that you can get and make on your own. That's coming up. Okay, I apologize. Um, clearly, I got a little carried away. I just received a lot of messages um, reminding me that I'm not Brian and this isn't The Smuggler's Room. Um, but if you're like me, you've crossed paths with Brian and Carissa at the Smuggler's Room. Their creativity and energy is infectious. You feel like you're family and friends to them, and that you're making the props with them side by side each and every week. So I thought, why not I build this kit and show you the Smuggler's Room experience, at least how I see it. That's coming up. Okay, sorry. I think that's the last one. Definitely the last one. I think. We'll see. So it all starts with going to the Smuggler's Room store. You buy the kit. <laughs> okay, I know they sell out fast. Like trying to find a Jedi one week after Order 66. Too soon? On the same web page, the original prop video is linked, as well as the update video where Brian explains the changes made in the newer version 2 kit. And lastly, there is a very detailed instruction manual. Now when the package arrived, I was impressed to see how carefully everything is packaged, and the personal touch was awesome. can't emphasize enough, doing a dry fit saved me a ton of time and headaches. When it comes to aligning the 12 tines on the sprocket wheel, I found that using the included spacers help to align the parts. So that all you have to do is spin the tine jig so that it perfectly aligns with the laser marks on the cog wheel. I do recommend being very precise with the glue here because even the slightest amount of squeeze out will make it impossible to separate the jig from the sprocket. So up to this point, everything has gone together pretty simple. I think the biggest decisions were how I wanted to paint it. But that didn't take nearly as long as trying to figure out how to assemble the cogwheel. Or maybe it's a sprocket. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to go find a gnome from Ironforge to figure out what the exact terminology is for this. So, if you take off the cover, in the version 2, 
He put a nice little line here, tells you exactly where you're supposed to put the new PVC ring. And that all makes sense. I was even willing to read the instruction manual, which I printed off. I think I read it probably 10 times, still a little bit confused. So I watched the video another 10 times, still a little bit confused. I went to the forums, went online trying to see if somebody else built uh, this version of the kit. It appears that almost everybody's built the version one kit where the inside looks a little more like this, like in the original video. And this one makes it obvious where the bolt goes. It goes right there. He said it's designed for an M6 bolt. Now with this kit, you line up and glue the PVC ring and then this is supposed to go in there, but that's a big hole for the bolt. So then I finally figured out that this ring, which comes out of this part of the box, that's supposed to be there. And I kind of thought this is really thin and the threads don't hold into this thin a material very well. And then I thought that if people were gonna come in, everyone's gonna to wanna to spin the cog wheel. This thing's gonna break. And then the other part that I kind of struggled with is even if I can figure out all of that, I'm not a math engineer. So if I've got the bolt, it goes in there and it's supposed to be secured at the bottom, just like that. But where do I glue the disc to make sure that when I put the top on, the cog centered and not off to the side. So luckily I bought both versions of the kit, probably about two seconds after I saw the video when it first aired, I immediately went and bought the kit. And by the time I got to a point where I felt I could make it, uh, he released another version of it. So I bought that one too and I decided it was time to build it. So I quickly assembled, which is why it's not kind of perfect, it's a little different, but it kind of gave me some ideas of maybe how to merge the two of them because I love the PVC pipe because it's very solid, it's not gonna break. However, I like the design of this better. All these little rings allow you to step up or down this plate. So if you want to use all of the cogs, which is actually a couple more, um, you can do that. If you want to use maybe just two, you just step up this plate a little bit more and you can do that. So when I emailed him, this is kind of the information he conveyed to me, was the reason he didn't provide the bolt in the kit, because the kit comes with near everything. The only thing it doesn't come with, it doesn't come with a bolt, and it doesn't come with the electronics. He didn't provide the bolt because he didn't know how many cogs people were going to use. And the other reason is he didn't know how people were going to position the cogs depending on regardless of how many they used because maybe somebody wants it so it's just flush with the top or maybe they want to take off a few and they want it sitting really low hidden underneath or you wanted them really high up and proud from the front well, where you put this center disc changes how that's configured. Um, and the first version, which is this one, it allowed you to change the rings where you glued them to adjust for that. So what I ended up doing, I took the ring, 
I took some MDF and I traced it and then I cut out this and now I got this so I have the sturdiness of the PVC yet I still have the old design where the wafers in the middle now where's the rub the PVC ring doesn't go centered over the cog wheel it actually goes over a little bit and is askew. So I lined up the inside. And then I put the top on. I traced a circle. And then from that circle, that kind of told me where the registration would be for the cog wheels. And from that, I was able to trace the hole. I was able to drill the hole. And while I had everything lined up, the last thing you want is to do all of that, fiddle with things, and then when you glue it down, you glue the registration marks wrong. I basically just took a straight edge and I marked a line across and marked the edge. And I did this side and marked the edge. So when I come back, I know exactly where it's supposed to align. And when I assemble it, it'll be exactly where I want. That was my solution. Time for a little weathering. So while I did originally think about making a Canon version of this, I quickly realized the kit that he ships out isn't identical to the one that he made on the first video. So I decided to just run with it. So I weathered this kit and the more I went along, the dirtier it got. But this is a workshop after all. Nothing's really all that clean here. I must say, I love the design of these boxes. Super easy to put together, and to be honest, I wish he sold these boxes online by themselves. Now when the box came to me, it was clear acrylic. Originally I painted it white, but as soon as I added power, the light went right through the white paint. So I added some brown paint, and again, the light went right through it. And at the end where the LED is, it's like a flashlight and it's pointing directly to the top vents of the build, which means it's like a bat signal coming out the top. I decided to put some electrical tape all the way around it so that all the light would be focused out the front lens. Alright, so what was my takeaway? Putting it together for the most part was really simple. I did have some difficulties with the sprocket as I explained. However, while I think the update video 
was very valuable. I wish he had mentioned a little bit more about the cog and how to install it to the back plane. So at least beginners like me had a way to move forward so we could complete the kit easily, like the rest of it. On the flip side, not having it exactly as shown in the video pushed my limits as a maker. I had to be creative. Take time, think, design, and make mistakes to learn. And to be honest, I felt I solved something in this build, which added to my feeling of accomplishment. Lastly, I would recommend this kit to anyone. In fact, everyone. Thank you.